begin on this instruction video. First, let me compliment you on how well you're doing. The other assignments that you've done so far, the character trash and character room assignments, have both been really, really fun to read. I've really enjoyed the creativity that you've put into giving these characters a little bit more depth. So today you get another chance to do it, and I'm sure that you're going to do it very well because most of you are already doing very well with the skill that this activity is supposed to teach. So for those of you who are already pretty good at this, this is just a reminder for you, and for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, this will be a good lesson for you. Now let's figure out what I'm actually talking about. Today's assignment is on showing versus telling in writing. Now, most of the writing that you do for school is very telling based. And what I mean by that is that most of the writing that you do for school is like the stuff that you do for a test or a report, where your goal, goal is to tell the information that you know as quickly and as concisely and as clearly as you can. When you're doing creative writing, though, you want to be able to describe things for people. You want to be able to paint a picture with words or however you want to phrase it so that you involve the reader a little bit more and the writing is just more pretty. Your goal isn't to be quite as, uh, as efficient. Your goal is to use words in a way that's a little bit more fun and playful. So today's writing assignment is meant to help you find that balance. Um, just to give you a little bit, oh, I switched those around. I should have noticed that. Let's switch those right now. Um, <laughs> awesome. I love when teachers make mistakes, especially when they're recording it. Okay, this first category is actually telling, not showing, as is currently labeled. You can ignore that. Telling is short, and it's direct, and it might be a little bit boring. What I mean by short is that it's, it's very easy to get the information out quickly. If you look at the example at the bottom, I've written, she was happy. Now, that's nice, brief, to the point, it's very direct. Um, but it might be a little bit boring, and I say that because if you write, she was happy, she ran to the store, she bought Oreos, they were her favorite. If you say that over and over and over again, then you end up with a book that sounds a lot like, or a story that sounds a lot like those little readers that you used to read when you were in kindergarten, um, when you were learning how to read, that used lots of one-syllable words, the, like the C. Jane Run books and whatever else. <laughs> they're, they're nice and efficient, but they're kind of boring, they're not very interesting to read, and that's where showing comes in handy. Showing is a little bit longer, and that's because you're using language to describe things so that the reader can come to their own conclusions. So that's why it involves the reader a little bit more. Um, and it's often a little bit more interesting. Now, you can go the other way where you, instead of using so much telling, you actually use way too much showing, and then that can get to the point where it's just a little bit laborious, and the reader says, okay, will you please just get to the point, just tell me what I need to no, you don't need to describe every ounce of drink that this person is having, or you don't need to describe every hair on her head. You just need to tell me what color it is. I don't care that much. So you do want to try and find a balance between the two. But the, the basics with showing is that it involves, for example, the five senses. That's the easiest way to remind yourself that you need to show every once in a while is to describe things by how they look, how they smell, how they taste, how they feel when you touch it, or how they sound. So. An example here is she bounded down the stairs with a laugh. Now, in both of these, the point is made that the person in the sentence is happy, but in the first one, they just tell us that she is, and in the second one, the example actually shows us by the fact that she's bounding down the stairs and that she's laughing. Those two combined help us to know that she's happy, so the point has been made, but it's been made in a way that lets the reader come to their own conclusions. Now, the, the danger with too much telling is that if you do something that the reader disagrees with, for example, if you say she was happy, she sat down at the table with a big thud and stomped her books on the floor or whatever, then we don't really believe you. Um, but too much of this, again, can get a little bit laborious. So you do want to try and find a balance. However, for today's assignment, I don't want you to worry quite so much about finding a balance if this is a new concept for you. If you have done a lot of creative writing before and you feel comfortable with the balance of showing and telling, then just tell the story. But if you are not so comfortable with this, if this feels a little new to you, then I want you to focus as much as you can on the five senses. So your assignment for today is what we call the weather right. This is when you are going to put your one of the characters from the book that you're currently reading, so Wart or Kay or Merlin or Long John Silver or Jim or another one of the pirates or Englishmen if you want, um, you want to put them in a, in a situation where weather is involved. The weather is changing or uh, you know, something along those lines, where the focus of the symbolism is on the weather. 
So it doesn't need to be 500 words or about a page. It's the same as all the other assignments. You've done fine on like so far, so don't worry about it too much. Um, you want to focus on one character only, so no conversations, no involvement with other people. They need to be either alone or in, you know, kind of trapped in their own thoughts, not paying attention to anybody else. And you want to focus on their reactions to show how they feel or who they really are. So, for example, if you were to put a character on a pirate ship in the middle of a, in a, in the middle of a storm and they weren't terribly panicked by it, that could show us a couple of things. That could show that they are either very arrogant and figure that things are going to be fine, or it could show us that they've just been through it enough that they know how to handle it. If they are freaking out, it could be that either the storm is actually really quite bad, or it could be that they're just not very experienced. And then the rest of the details that you give us would help to help us to determine which of those roads is actually correct. So again, the goal of your assignment is to put your character in some kind of weather-related situation, and then to allow them to show their reactions based on how they respond to other people or how they respond to the weather or sorry, not how they respond to other people, how they respond to the weather itself or how they respond to the situations caused by the weather. Uh, a couple other suggestions, just because it's sunny outside doesn't mean the character has to really enjoy the activities that are going on. It could be that there's a terrible rainstorm and really happy things happen. So you can play around with that a little. Sometimes we get a little stereotypical in the fact that if bad things are happening, it's going to rain, or if good things are happening, it's going to be sunny. You can play around with that a little. You can also play around with doing some weather right that's not necessarily focusing on the extremes. It doesn't have to be the worst thunderstorm ever. It could just be a light drizzle, or instead of it it being like the hottest day of the year, it could just be a pleasant sunny day. So play around with that a little bit. If you have any questions, shoot me an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm available. And I hope that you enjoyed this assignment. You've been doing really well so far. I'm sure that you're going to do great.